question. It comes from various sources, so the different they have different profit margins, and I can discuss in detail with you at a, another in another platform. Overall, approximately. Um, I'd rather not discuss that. Can companies approach you with uh, a certain experiment in mind, and you can? configure the assay for it? Is that a typical service that you would run? Yeah, we can. So uh, very often, Howie has um, a lot of these, um, how you say, clients come to us. They will say, I would like to ask where my sales have gone, or I'd like to have, I have this idea. And um, the most recent one was that I would like to protect my IP using an oncolytic virus. Can you design from concept? So what we have to have, and that is some of the problem I am facing is the growth is, as a service, you need your high um, caliber scientists. You have a good team. Team building is critically important, and that's one of the headaches I have. So we design for you all the vectors. We perform the in-life imaging for you to whatever degree you prefer. And we have been having great partners with the Mayo Clinic to enable us to do some of these studies. So I've asked one of our walleyes to do double duty. I was a little disappointed to hear that you didn't bring one of your demonstration products, but apparently it doesn't fit in your car. Is that how it works? All right, Perry, this is Perry with uh, Recombinetics. Thank you very much, Steve. And, and thank you all for coming. Uh, you can see from this slide that uh, I don't always obey uh, the suggestions, but what this slide is meant to represent is that I've spent the past 15 years, 16 years now of my life, taking model systems to human benefit. So we all know that the CRISPR-Cas technology has taken over everybody's imagination for genome editing, but let's not forget that in the 21st century, the real efficient genome editing was introduced by Dan Voitas around 2010 from the Center of Genome Engineering. My dad, that Steve Ecker was the first head of the Beckman Center that uh, preceded the Center for Genome Engineering. The big questions are, what do you do with it? The old-fashioned genetic engineering was just the equivalent of adding an expression cassette to a genome. That's like adding a sentence to a book. In today's world, though, we talk about genome editing precision, changing one character in a thousand books. That's what we do. Anything can be written. Minnesota, we have to realize, is the focus for genetic editing applications in agriculture. I'd like to describe them. So I'm representing Recombinetics now, both as a co-founder and a member of the board, a former chief science officer. On this slide, you see on the left that genome editing on large animals can be applied to, in fact, large-scale agriculture. At the very bottom, you see that starvation is beginning to increase worldwide. The World Food Organization estimates we'll have to double the food supply by 2050 to accommodate everybody in 2050 with adequate nutrition. We have a choice of either greatly expanding the efficiency of agriculture or, of course, going into lands that we'd otherwise like to keep pristine. In the middle is represented the ability of genetically editing animals to more reasonably recapitulate human diseases and disorders, and we do that mainly in pigs, and that's our lead-off models, as you'll see. A third area is to grow human organs in pig avatars. I won't be talking about that. That's about 20 years down the road. What I would like to show you, though, is, and you've seen uh, the picture of Burry and Spotted G in the upper right-hand corner already, thank you, uh, that Acelogen, which is our division for genome editing of agricultural animals, is very robust. Down at the bottom, you can see our double-muscled uh, cows that we've produced. Any lines that you see that go beyond that uh, second vertical line represent animals on the ground. Others are on the ground, but in testing and being validated. We have any number of other animals that are in our freezers ready to be made when we find partners for their development. Surgeon is our animal model system, and that's a far more robust area where we're already making sales. You can see our uh, 
pig for metabolic syndrome in the upper right. We have an atherosclerosis model pig. You can see a little bit of his disorder. We have a model for um, cardiomyopathy. And then down below, a pig that represents polycystic kidney disease. The little red oval represents the size of a normal kidney. The dotted line indicates the kidney in this particular model animal. We have a number of cancer pigs that also have been made. So the bottom line is that we're unprecedented, really, in the biotech world. As you can see, we have a unique focus. Everybody else seems to be using site-specific mutagenesis for human uh, health issues. We're taking everything between the two coasts uh, and applying it to agriculture. We have total freedom to operate. We have controlling IP, including IP on the use of CRISPR technology in uh, livestock. We have extensive product pipeline you saw, income revenue. We've got the right people. And you can be a part of this revolution. Our B round is nearly complete. It, we've got $5 a share. We're looking for $10 million of financing that we believe will close by July 31st. Thank you. Sorry, two questions. Um, how much uh, revenue have you generated over what period of time? And then what would the use of the funds be for this round? Yes, we've raised $18 million in, in sales of stock and another $10 million in research grants and contracts. And what will you use the additional funding for? We need to expand our facilities to have complete freedom to do our business without uh, having to use other vendors for reproductive technologies and the like. Do you think there's any regulatory risk around selling like the dead end, the pre-castrated cattle? Do you think you'll ever feel any pressure from anyone to do freestanding? Like this is so beneficial to hunger that these animals should be able to reproduce? So that's one of the most important questions is what do you do about regulations? And what we've done is to take various reports that point out that what we do is not considered genetic modifications via recombinant DNA. Our position is that we have grass status that's generally regarded as safe. What we do is no different than using an expedited system that could come from just mating of animals. So we don't report to the FDA and we've let them know and they haven't said a word back. Okay, while we, um, this is going to be a, a slight intermission, the Walt lies. You have your charge. Carl will take you up. You are, your charge is to deliberate. Come back with us with a list of three recommendations for potential winners and runner up, and one potential junior angler. Okay, so the last part while they let our esteemed guests deliberate. Um, we have been joined by the last segment, which is um, a set of local um, entrepreneurs whose voices represent um, help. So what do I mean by that? I believe that building a startup is like raising a child. It's a, it takes a village to make a startup go. And these are all services that are being designed and built. And for those especially that are, may not be here, the Destination Medical Center is a dramatic um, investment in this the capacity to make and grow. So Jamie, one of our, our event co-organizers, is off on a new adventure. And we're going to hear about it now. Thanks, Jamie. Oh, you want the microphone? <laughs> Cut me off. Um, okay, so first of all, we've been here a really long time, so everybody stand up and stretch for like two seconds. Because I get like, I don't have to face the walleyes, so stretch. I needed to. 
All right, second of all, I am so glad I didn't wear Steve Ecker's jacket because I have one exactly like it, and I was just about to wear that today. So, <laughs> stoked about that. Um, well, we're all getting uh, settled here. I'd also, um, so I poke fun at Steve, but I want to I wanna thank Steve for, uh, and his team for really pulling all of this together. Uh, as, he, as Steve mentioned, I am uh, as leaving Mayo in, in 20 days, I think almost exactly, and uh, embarking on a new adventure, which I'll talk about today. So can we have a round of applause for Steve and his group? Because I was pretty moderately useless the last couple of days. <laughs> I was wrapping up some stuff. So I'm going to try to record